Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another episode of the B2B Podcast. Join us always with Daniel Mulligan. How's it going, buddy? What's up, my man, buddy? How's it going? Good to be here with you for yet another awesome podcast. Let's talk edition beyond the present here with you, my man. Life is great. Fortunately, we're hearing a lot of great news uh, worldwide regarding the progress towards the, basically the coronavirus pandemic right now worldwide, particularly with respect to the you know, vaccination, because the fact that uh, Pfizer and basically vaccine and a few others were somehow kind of uh, slow to move and to, to transfer to different countries because of you know, the, all the temperature requirements. Now, just today, it was announced that the Sputnik V, the Russian vaccine, actually is more than 91 percent effective. And as you probably know, that was uh, basically made with uh, older technologies, which means it doesn't require uh, any specific equipment to be transferred. It can just be moved around by a simple uh, refrigerator anywhere around the world. And that is uh, going to make it much faster to supply vaccine to more developing nations or poorer nations around the world to accelerate the process of getting out of this goddamn pandemic. So that was a very good news uh, overall. Of course, in the same country, we're hearing some other bad news about the politics. But then again, Politics is rarely uh, a happy place for most people, right? So generally, life is great in terms of business. Gradually, the world is uh, uh, somehow coming to terms with the pandemic. We're gradually seeing improvements in terms of employment numbers all around the world, or at least in those nations that I'm currently active in. So overall, it's been great. And uh, the hope that this uh, pandemic is soon uh, going to at least be alleviated and eventually uh, conquered, hopefully by the end of the year, is just uh, probably the best news we've gotten so far, and uh, couldn't be any happier. No, absolutely, that's true. It's uh, it's been it's been a devastating year, and it's, it continues to be. And that's good, great news to hear that uh, there there are being uh, the things are being facilitated towards vaccination in a variety of countries, not just the developing uh, the, the developed countries, but also the developing countries. Uh, however, in the meantime, we are still uh, in the midst of the pandemic, and. Uh, to talk, uh, which brings us to the, today's topic, which uh, has people dealing with depression and suicide during this pandemic because of variety of, uh, yeah, from variety of reasons, from the lack of activity perhaps to not being able to contact with others, loss of jobs, mm-hmm. economic hardships, caused people to retreat mentally perhaps to a degree, exactly. be depressed, and in the worst cases, unfortunately. Uh, commit suicide. Now, uh, what are your thoughts very broadly on this topic uh, during this pandemic? First of all, uh, what a great topic you picked, Pujix, for this show. Uh, I agree with you completely. Uh, the, the reasons are multitude when it comes to the reasons why we are seeing higher numbers of depression and extremely higher numbers of suicide, which is just uh, unprecedented, basically. But then again, as you pointed out yourself, it definitely does make sense. I mean, you would definitely expect such things to happen in this uh, current situation, given the fact that the pandemic has pretty much made it impossible to be human. I mean, what makes us human, I was watching a speech uh, by Chancellor Merkel, and uh, despite the fact that she's been quite uh, harsh, uh, basically with uh, the restrictions, which I think she made the right decision because Germany was getting out of control and she made a lot of uh, basically new Uh, sweeping rules to make sure that people are staying at home. Uh, And she was in one of her speeches actually was saying uh, that uh, all the things that we have done is actually making us less human. So she admitted it openly. And I really admire her courage for that too, as as a global leader to come and say that. And she said that uh, all the things we say we should not be doing are the things that we should technically be doing to be healthy and happy. I mean, uh, physical contact with those around us, uh, getting close, being social, communicating frequently, leaving the house, being physically active, moving around, eating well, and above all, not always panicking and being anxious. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna touch this right now, I'm gonna get the virus. Literally, I was in the seminar yesterday. Of course, we conducted this seminar under the strict rules of the basically health guidelines to make sure that, first of all, the number of attendants uh, were kept limited. And second, we made sure everybody wears masks and have the distance. Uh, And in that seminar, we actually talked about a similar topic. And ultimately, a lot of our attendants said, like, I am just uh, my biggest problem isn't the goddamn virus. It's the psychological toll that it has had on my life. Now, in the same seminar, we we, we took a survey and we realized Generally, this pandemic has hurt the extroverted population far more severely than the introverted ones. I mean, like we were just uh, we asked people, so which ones in this class, for example, or in this environment are more likely to be introverted? We collected you know, the results. Who is going to be like extroverted? We got the results and realized the ones who reported to be more extroverted 
were the ones, ironically, who found it almost impossible to deal with it. One of our attendants are like, you know what? I've been doing this for like, uh, when, I, when, it, when it first happened, I told my husband, this is going to be like, oh, a couple of months maximum, maybe two, three months. So I just can't go on any further. I'm just literally done with this. And obviously that pressure and that psychological toll isn't just on that lady uh, who attended our seminar, but it, it's basically, uh, it describes perfectly what is happening to billions of people around the world right now. It's the same level of pressure and anxiety. So I guess the biggest toll that we, it had on us, other than the fact that we can't really do a lot of things we normally uh, have always taken for granted, but it's more about uh, that sense of, you know, presence, always worrying if I'm going to get infected or not, always having to wash. I mean, one of our attendants was like, look at my hands. I've been washing this every friggin' 10, 15 minutes and I'm done. So th all of these things are going to create problems. And uh, this is definitely going to affect us negatively in terms of our uh, mental health and psychological well-being. So obviously, as you pointed out, uh, basically this issue is tremendous. It has affected all of us. Some of us more than the others. I mean, those of our listeners right now who tend to self-report themselves as extroverts probably have been hurt, hit, hit the hardest. And uh, ironically, we've had a couple of introverts in our audience who said, man, I love the pandemic. It's the best time ever. I don't have to leave the house. I can work in my pajamas and I can simply read books all the time. I don't see anyone's face. It's all normal. So it, it really depends, I guess, on the person you're talking to, right? So Definitely, this pandemic has not been as harsh on certain people, especially, I guess, on those who come from wealthier backgrounds. I mean, those who are, are basically wealthy in general, who have had assets before the pandemic, now most of them are richer in most nations that I'm currently active in, actually. Whether it's those who work in real estate, those who have, you know, uh, accumulated stocks. Now, do you remember the games, uh, basically, Stop Stocks, guys? I mean, that was incredible, basically. But what I'm saying is, uh, those who have been uh, wealthier have had it much better off. Uh, um, unfortunately, those who were uh, middle class or lower middle class, they are the ones who are hit the hardest because not only they have to face with all of the natural psychological impacts of the pandemic, they have even lost their jobs, many of them, and they don't have even money. So on top of all of that, now they have financial problems too. And as you probably know, uh, in the field of management, we say no crisis ever occurs alone. And always it is followed by other crises because one thing leads to another and this continues, right? So because of all of this, now we are seeing a tremendous impact on the psychological well-being of people around the world. And of course, it is a mental health crisis and we need to help basic people to find their way around and to hopefully make it to the end of the pandemic uh, basically intact. I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, so that there's there, there are multitudes of why somebody would face uh, challenges mentally, perhaps. Um, you mentioned a lot of them. Of course, economic uh, uh, pressures could be um, another, you know, potential problems that people are facing, and sometimes that takes a toll. Uh, now, to a degree, especially, so it, it's really, uh, I guess, it really depends on the causes of the uh, mental pressure and depression, perhaps, but to a degree, it might really not be avoidable for, for some people uh, under some circumstances, or it might be for others, perhaps to a degree, but mm -hmm. either way, I think there should be, and there are ways to, you know, minimize this pressure, this mental pressure. And I, I want to put a disclaimer here, neither myself or Daniel are not, you know, uh, experts in this subject. We're not licensed. We're not certified healthcare professionals. So, so right. obviously these are meant purely to inform you and it's not going to replace the advice of a professional psychiatrist. Perfect. Yeah, that's what I was going with this. So just if you do have problems, please seek professional help. But we are me merely here to give our own advice based on our expertise. Uh, uh, but no licenses here. So uh, I just had to put that disclaimer out there. But from your perspective, what are things people, especially extroverted people like yourself, because you're one of them, who is dealing probably with this challenge? Oh, boy. Uh, oh and boy. people who have, uh, you know, financial difficulties. What would you? How would you? You know, advise um, the people of these two categories mainly. For sure, uh, but I'm actually I'm going to give you both answers in a moment because I know my answer. But you, on the other hand, I'm sure also all of us, our listeners know about this that you are uh, slightly more on the introverted side, and I'm more on the extroverted side. So I'm actually curious first about you. 
Did you really feel that toll and pressure on you during this uh, basically period? I mean, how do you feel as somebody who's uh, more introverted than extroverted? Right. Uh, so that, this is actually a funny question you ask because especially being around somebody like yourself, yes, I'm definitely much more introverted than you are. Um, so I always consider myself more like, yeah, uh, probably in the middle, but uh, edging towards the introverted side. But actually this pandemic happened and I did, then I realized how much I, in fact, I'm extroverted because I, I started missing people. I was like, no, I just want to see people. Man. Wanna, and phone calls don't see, do even justice. Even introverts feel a pain, man. Can you believe that? <laughs> even those, of course, you are not a hardcore introvert, obviously, because no, no. As you point out, I think you're more on the ambivert side. So you have Probably. both sides to your character and personality. Uh, but uh, of course, I, I've talked to a few really hardcore introverts who didn't have much problem. But I'm pretty sure even like a very standard introvert would still feel a lot of things is missing in, in his or her life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because as humans, this is just the, those the human interactions and, you know, uh, personal touches uh, are essential to our existence. I mean, again, yes, there are always exceptions to these uh, quote unquote rules, but typically uh, we as humans do uh, crave that, you know, uh, interaction. So it was it was I just realized how extroverted I actually am. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, of course, you can do phone calls, you can do video calls, group uh, video calls, etc. all of that. Uh, good stuff but at the end of the day there is something that is about you know physically being in the same place at the same time that has a uh a a a, a, a you know a comforting uh feeling that of is course. always missing in these interactions um yeah but, but i still don't definitely have the hardest of times i'm sure compared to people like yourself but uh it did hit me a little bit especially deep into after months uh of uh, past the pandemic uh, it definitely did hit me uh, uh, especially you living in canada and, and you guys are all you know law-abiding citizens and nice guys <laughs> and like you never never like violate anything so i'm guessing it was much harder for you guys as well or those nations who really yeah. followed all the health protocols because in some nations that i've worked in pretty much nothing i mean right now for right. example if you go to countries like russia dude these guys have opened their strip clubs as well so i mean that's it's very hard to wear a mask when you're getting street uh, basically dancing right there but <laughs> overall it's uh, what i'm saying is it hasn't affected people equally in different nations for sure and since this issue really is an international issue you, you see major uh, and measurable differences between nations among uh, their citizens based mm. on the rules conventions and how well the people follow those rules basically i think that's incredibly important basically uh, so as expected of course uh for us extroverts, uh, the, the pressure has been much harder, although I personally have done my very best to make sure that my social life is not going to be affected so much. Now, in addition to having basically meetings uh, online from morning to night, pretty much I felt my entire schedule to make sure that I'm, I'm always working and I'm always in touch and especially communicating because for me, that's very important. I also managed to, uh, uh, whenever we could, to actually create uh, you know events and seminars as much as possible to fill up that gap, if you will, uh, even though, uh, because nowadays it's much harder to attend, for example, like a, a full on party because ob obviously limitations and there's no possibility of dancing. Uh, but seminars, it's a lot more uh, feasible given that you can actually create social distancing among the audience and so on and so forth. So I tried my very best to remain as social as possible. Uh, and, uh, and I really believe that when it comes to extroverts, they really need to do their best to get out of the house whatever the way they can. Now, for me personally, I also uh, uh, have always uh, taken my uh, basically uh, sports seriously, taken my fitness seriously and my uh, workout very seriously. So uh, during the pandemic, my actually uh, my record has actually increased in almost all the things I do. And uh, nowadays I exercise three times per day. So morning before going to work and uh, basically in the afternoon when I hit the gym and at nights just for a, you know, uh, relaxing walk. So I actually ended up exercising more during the pandemic, uh, you know, than before, uh, ironically, it was pretty interesting. And now, uh, fortunately, in my case, I did not have to deal with the financial aspects of the pandemic, because all of our businesses, uh, except for the ones regarding real estate, uh, with respect to Airbnb business model, uh, we're not affected that much. So pretty much all of our businesses remained active because we managed to link them all online, except for the ones regarding uh, the tourism, because we have uh, basically, the, as I proposed uh, previously on one of our posts about this Airbnb model, we actually had an episode about this completely, we discussed the details. So that sector, because it's linked to tourism, 
uh, was heavily influenced until a while back when the borders gradually got to open in certain countries like Dubai, for example. But still, outside of tourism and uh, Airbnb uh, rentals, pretty much all of our other businesses were active during this time. And in some cases, actually, they became more profitable than before. However, in, I, I know that in this case, I am not representing the majority of people around the world. What is instead uh, the case is that most people around the world, unfortunately, suffered financially. They lost their jobs. They tapped into all of their savings and they started, you know, accumulating credit uh, debts for consumer, uh, basically, products. And this is a very, very bad and uh, a very uh, grimy view of the future for most of these people, because now they have to work for years just to get out of the debts they accumulated during the pandemic. So for that reason, I believe that uh, we need to create a plan, a game plan to approach both our social lives and our financial lives. Many of those so-called uh, depressions that you mentioned, or even suicides, have to do with their finances. I mean, let's be honest, if you really lose your job and then you have no income and you have no job and no work for two years, you are, something's going to, you know, click in your head like, man, I'm done with this. I'm, where's my shotgun? And you're going to have some problems, obviously, right? So for that reason, I believe we need to have a game plan to address both issues uh, because our depression in most cases has to do either with our uh, basically emotional problems or our financial problems, because both are equally challenging uh, to our basically psyche. And we have to find a way to address both. And um, obviously, I think uh, the key here is how we can address both separately, depending on the nation, culture, and their lifestyles. Uh, that's very comprehensive. I think um, you hit it right on. It's, uh, it's, it's definitely a challenge. So what I can say uh, to those people is that uh, you're not alone. You know, um, uh, bear, bear that in mind. Notice that this is a challenge for a lot of people. Uh, some are luckier, of course, than others, perhaps, uh, or more prepared, perhaps. But at the end of the day, um, this is this is a this is a collective challenge. So that should be exactly. a, a a hopeful uh, view, meaning that you're not alone. Because a lot of times, these mental pressures are more uh, pressured by the fact that you feel like you're left out, you're alone, nobody's there with you. But at least, even if it's a challenge, it's a, com a collective challenge, and I'm sure uh, we'll get past it one way or another. Um, okay, so we're coming to. The end portion of the show, and I, I want to give you the time to, you know, give a uh, like a uh, bring everything together. If if we didn't say something, uh, do so. But before that, I just have a news which is which I just got. Oh, awesome! Uh, what is it? Now the BTP podcast is also available on iHeartRadio, uh, Android, Whoa! iOS, or Hello, the website. Guys. Hello there, <laughs> iHeartRadio. That's right. We're now on radio, baby. Come on. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, so this is this is another good news. I just received the confirmation. So, uh, congratulations to us and all so, the listeners. So, first of all, Pujix, I want to congratulate you. You are the world's literally the best producer, at least for me. You're the world's best podcast producer. It. Good job for you know making the progress. Really, you put a lot of effort into this, arranging everything, using AI to generate you know the transcript of our conversations, creating new ways to publish it, and. Really amazing, man. I, I congratulate you for the hard work. And yeah, iHeartRadio, Beyond the Present Podcast. Oh, yeah. It is much appreciated. And uh, anybody who already is on the platform, I'm sure you're going to get a kick out of it. If not, uh, take, a, take a look at the platform. It's actually quite quite nice for uh, you know podcasting. And they also have live, live radio. So um, pay attention to that. Uh, anyways, so getting back to our subject um, now, the time is yours. The, the platform is yours. If we missed anything that you wanted to add or you want to uh, bring everything together, please do so. That's right. Very well. So we discussed in detail today about uh, the, the issue of depression and suicide. We brought about the causes, but we haven't fully uh, offered solutions. So I would like to, in the last part, give a few uh, solutions for those of us who are suffering from depression right now as we speak or are perhaps, uh, goodness forbid, are contemplating perhaps suicide. When it comes to depression, of course, that's a far more prevalent issue than suicide right now. And if you all listen to us right now and you feel depressed, you feel like your life makes no sense and that uh, you're losing that sense of pleasure, first of all, know whether or not you have those symptoms. Pretty much depression uh, is defined as you losing motivation and pleasures of the daily life that you used to have and no longer can feel. At the same time, you also feel less motivated. So if you feel like life is not as 
pleasant as it used to be, or you don't have as much motivation. These are all red signs of early signs of depression and you need to take action immediately. Now, what does that mean? Remove the mask and start kissing people on the streets? No, don't do that. Like, well, I got vaccinated. I want to kiss everybody. Don't do that. It's dangerous. Don't do that. So instead, what you got to do is to try to make your life social. Even if you are a hardcore introvert, find ways to get social online, perhaps, or in events where it's not online, but you can actually maintain your focus and also social distancing. At the same time, try your very best to remain focused on achieving certain goals. You've lost your job. You're, you're running out of your you know, savings. It's all okay. You could temporarily use credit just to you know, make ends meet. But please do know that right now, most governments around the world are offering some sort of financial support to their citizens. Now, if you're living in those nations where that's not possible, still, you could uh, be able to create some form of income. So if you're uh, unemployed and you have no job, then just sit like, man, I got no money, only virus and no money. Get out of the house or at least search online for ways to generate income or find a new job. Trust me, in the same economy if, uh, that, that we are dealing right now, now there's a lot of demand for different types of uh, basically jobs. So it could be a courier, it could be a delivery guy. And you're like, well, but I work as an accountant. I don't want to be a delivery guy now for Amazon. I know, but it's a crisis and it's much better to be active and doing something than not doing. So sitting in your home and thinking about all the good old days that you work in your office is not going to change it. Yeah, it's not as fun to be a delivery guy or find other means of employment that are now more in demand. Perhaps uh, if you have an IT experience to work online with some other companies. But the key is keep yourself active and engaged. Success equals goals. The pandemic, unfortunately, has forced a lot of us to forget about our goals or have simply none. Set new goals. Ask yourself, what are the kind of goals I can achieve during the pandemic? You want to go even further, tell yourself, what are some opportunities that the pandemic will present me that I could never, ever, ever have? For me right now, literally, the pandemic is an opportunity. And for me, the end of the pandemic is both very happy and very sad. It's going to be very sad because I am literally going to run out of time for a very special period of opportunism. On the other hand, for a lot of people, just imagine, just imagine, like you feel like, dude, pandemic's going to end in seven months. I got only seven months to do all these things. Once you change your perspective, not only you will not suffer through the pandemic, as I haven't, but you will actually benefit from it, right? So ask yourself, what unique opportunities does pandemic present to me? Perhaps deep thoughts, meditation, self-analysis, setting new goals, having deep conversations with your partner that you haven't had for a long time, or finding new ways to perhaps, uh, you know, get yourself active, developing new hobbies. The pandemic is not all that bad, guys. Trust me, there's a lot of opportunities. They say within every obstacle or setback, there is a hidden gift. What is that gift for you? What gift has this pandemic brought for you? Yes, the pandemic can bring you some gifts, guys. Trust me. Now, that's for your emotional aspect of it. Financially, if you're struggling, the story applies. Do not sit on your sofa, watch the news and say, oh, my government is not releasing the goddamn, you know, uh, relief effort. Biden, do something. I need the paycheck now. Don't sit on your ass and just wait for the government to, you know, hand you a, you know, a check. Instead, ask yourself, how can I generate money right now? But I am an accountant. I'm not going to work as a delivery guy. Well, you want to be unemployed? It's much better to do something than not to do something, right? And get yourself out of the house or engaged to start generating income. Because the fact of the matter is, if you make very bad or poor financial decisions during this pandemic, it might take you literally five to 10 years to get out of it. This whole pandemic could last for only two years, and then you're going to have to pay for it financially in terms of, you know, uh, credit payments and uh, credit card payments for the next seven, eight, 10 years. So why do that? Why not instead find a way to live below your means and maintain and control your finances. Because by doing both of these things, you first of all, get yourself busy, active and moving, which is the key and antidote to all forms of depression. And secondly, you will make sure that your finances will not basically be left without any care or any attention. By doing both, hopefully you will increase your odds of beating depression, beating the pandemic, and ideally and hopefully benefiting from the pandemic. Well said. Well, said. I couldn't. So this this whole change of perspective that is r really really gold out there. I th I don't. It's a gem. I don't think a lot of people really realize. And it, it's obviously easier said than done. But when, when it's done, Definitely. 
it's done, you know. <laughs> All Absolutely. right. Uh, okay. With that, we're coming to the end of the show. As always, thank you, Dan, for joining us. My pleasure, buddy. Glad to be here with you. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. As always, now you can tune in in iHeart Radio as well, as you heard in the, a few minutes ago. Uh, until a later episode, have a good one.